hey guys welcome to the channel and thank you for watching we're gonna go through some trending topics in the chelsea community and why not other community if we have time for so let me ask you my friends to help your brother out subscribe to the channel like the video comment down below share one click one sub one like you all set let's try to get at least 500 likes in this video thank you so much for helping now let's move on <laughs> can you believe it like very soon i'll be making videos about where are they now you know these kind of videos like you make after 10 years <laughs> We're going to make them very, very soon because almost the entire squad from the Champions League is gone. It's going to be only Chile, Rhys James and Thiago Silva left. Can't believe it. Time is running, people. And I'm not complaining about anything here. Right? Before people jump and start saying, why are you complaining? Uh, no, I'm not defending anybody. I'm not complaining about everything. I'm just doing my job, which is analyzing certain things that people don't even think about, you know? So, you will see like Edouard Mendy, Thomas Tuchel, <laughs> Jorginho, Kante, when they got, uh, you know, the best trophies in Europe. Yeah, nostalgic, but this is part of life. <laughs> part of life, and uh, yeah, just remind you that uh, the time is running. So, um, while we are getting rid of pretty much everybody, we are building a team. And that's why I also always ask people to give the next manager time to build because it's not really easy to build a brand new team from scratches. All right, my people. So, there are certain topics that I will not talk in this video. Because I've already made a video on the Green Turf YouTube channel. So if you don't know that channel, please give it a chance. Go check out there and you'll find some more uh, quality videos over there. So I already made a video about Kepa Risabalaga, Edouard Mendy, and if Pochettino is making a mistake and all the good stuff. All right, let's move on to something else. Pep Guardiola really devaluated Romelu Lukaku today. <laughs> he came out to say, you know what? <clears throat> it took us eight years to win the Champions League. I am European champions because a striker missed a clear header from three yards away. <laughs> so just like sabotaging Lukaku here, devaluating him so Chelsea don't get anything. <laughs> So this is a conspiracy theory from, from me here. But he doesn't even talk about Lautaro Martinez one-on-one. -on -one and Pep was on his knees, right? He was like, he, he knew it was a goal, but Lautaro missed it. How many chances Lautaro got and missed it? But everybody is going to forget that header from Lukaku and not even giving credit to the goalkeeper who saved it, by the way. So depending on how you see it, if you hit Lukaku, you're going to love this kind of news, but you don't know that it's just hurting Chelsea Football Club, this kind of stuff, right? All right, my people. So we're going to continue just reading some headlines here. Uh, Arsen Zakarian. Remember him? The kid from Russia, 18 years old. I don't know if he's 19 now or 20. I don't know. You have to double check yourself. But this account here actually is a very good account because he's the guy who broke the news about Zakarian to Chelsea before anybody else, before Romano, before everybody started talking about it, like last summer. He broke the news about Chelsea really wanted to sign him. So lately, like today, he came out to say, that Arsene Zakaria is close to joining Chelsea as he is close to switching Armenian nationality. Uh, practically a done deal. Personal terms agreed. Wow. So we have to double check. And how many 
midfielders are we going to have? You know, Andrew Santos, Cesar Casade, and also uh, Gabri Viga or Viga from, from uh, the Spanish La Liga where Chelsea are checking and I even heard that Chelsea are preparing an official offer for him. So what's going to happen to them? And that's why I'm suggesting that Todd Boyle buys a club, you know, the French club or Portuguese or whatever division it is so we can send some players over there to develop because I don't see how this is going to be good for everybody. We don't want to find ourselves with 35 more players in the dressing room, right? <laughs> But Zakaria, he looks very good, man. He can create, he can score, he can dribble. He got everything. So if this news is real, I'm happy about it, but I'm just asking some questions before some people jump and say, why are you complaining? There is no complaint here. It's just analysis. And when you analyze something, you don't have to always say yes, yes, or say what people want to hear. It's just your opinion. All right, my people. So let's move on and talk about something else. Just uh, to remind you that everybody is crying now because Todd Bowley is doing madness on the market. <laughs> He's selling the so-called dead wood and people are not happy. So when we spend $600 million on buying players, oh, that is illegal. That is not good. When we try to sell our players now, it's... It's, uh, it's bad, it's illegal. So it's Chelsea, right? <laughs> it's Chelsea people just looking for something to say. All right, we're going to move to David Raya. Remember him? So this morning I made a video on the Green Turf YouTube channel about Kepa. I'm not very sure about Kepa Sabalaga. I want to see a different profile, a different number one. But looks like... Uh, Pochettino want Kepa as number one, and they are also working on David Raya. It's not done yet. Apparently, he agreed personal terms with Tottenham Hotspurs, but if a, a bigger club like Chelsea come calling, he's going to sign for Chelsea. The problem is, is he going to accept to be on the bench? Mm, that is a question. You know, be a number two for Kepa or fight for the number one spot. I don't have any problem. If any goalkeeper got longer arms, you know, this guy is the same size, 6'1 or something with Kepa, but he got long arms and he's very commanding in the box and his passing from the back is out of this world. So got some qualities that I want to see in a goalkeeper. He's not my number one though. My number one is going to be Mike Manyan, but you know what I mean? Anybody that can do better than Kepa is good for me. So we don't regret next season when we start conceding those top beans, top corners, right? <laughs> All right, my friends, let's move on. So Mateo Kovacic, this one also. Manchester City want to pay about 25 million. Chelsea want at least 30 million. So the difference is, you know, just few millions. So how much do you think that we should get from him? It was said before that it was going to be about 40 million and blah, 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 blah. Now it's less than 30 million. But listen, when you get rid of somebody like Kovacic, who is like on 100 50 150k a week or something like that you're not you're taking a chunk a chunk of money out of your your payroll so it's all good man it's all good one year left on his contract let Kovacic go and enjoy his time at City he's gonna cook at City Pep Guardiola is gonna develop him and he's gonna be more efficient in a team that works already good like Manchester City than in a young team that start from scratches like Chelsea Football Club. So good luck to Mr. Kovacic. All right, my friend. So I am going to, yeah, to say good luck to one of us, Nathan. Remember him? Nathan Baxter. He used to be in the academy, you know, he used to be around the first team. 
a lot of loans here and there. He's a goalkeeper, but not the same level, not the kind of goalkeepers that we are looking for. So good luck to him because he just signed uh, for Bolton permanently because we let him go on free. So yeah, I wanted just to pay my respect to somebody that I supported for years.